Okay, today we're going to do a presentation on making herbarium mounts. We're going to use um, a plant that we pressed in a previous presentation. And now you can see we're going to undo our plant press. It's been oh, a little over a week since we um, pressed this plant and it should be nice and dry. And it is. Now this was the red oak that we pressed a week or so ago. Uh, you can see that it is still uh, uh, maintains its uh, or retains I should say its green color. Some plants will lose its color, lose their color during uh, pressing because it depends on the type of plant, the cell structure and so forth in it. But oaks are very um, densely, um, the cells are densely packed together so they'll retain their green uh, chlorophyll color quite a bit. Um, what I have here is a um, piece of herbarium paper. It is acid free. Uh, here again, we buy, uh, purchase this from a, a biological supply house. It's approximately uh, 17 by 11 inches uh, in size. And we're going to take the plant and place it on the sheet to see you know, the size uh, characteristics of it. You can see right now that it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to have to trim it down a little bit. Also have to leave room for our label down here in the lower right hand corner. So by placing the plant like so on the sheet, I can come in and snip it off about right here. So I take my pruning shears, snip it off, don't need that any longer. And I have a plant that will fit on the paper, but still have room for our label down in the lower right hand corner. Now if you notice the plant when I pressed it before, remember I said that we always leave one, at least one leaf, in this case we've got two, bottom side up so that we can look at the characteristics on the bottom of the leaf. And we've got two of them this way, the rest of them are top side up. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to get into a position to where we can um, <clears throat> glue the plant specimen to the sheet itself. Okay, And you can get all different types of adhesive. They have special adhesives for this that's very, very expensive. We use the good old Elmer's glue all. Okay, Just take some Elmer's glue, squeeze it in a container, You don't need a lot of it. Okay? You need to dilute this a little bit. Straight Elmer's glue is a little bit too much. So you take some water and just dilute it a little bit. I put a little bit too much water in there. Of course, I can always add more glue. Now, that's about right consistency. It's uh, uh, a little bit thinner than the actual glue, but it's still strong enough to seal the, uh, the plant into, onto the paper itself. Okay, now we turn it upside down. Obviously, we're going to glue it on the bottom side. You take a brush. I've got some very small brushes. You can use a little bit bigger brush if you so desire. <coughs> and... Um, all you do is just paint the bottom side of the leaves, stems and everything with glue. You want to cover as much of the surfaces as you can, but you obviously don't want to overdo it to when you turn it back up right side up, all the glue comes seeping out onto your paper. Do this on a piece of newspaper or some paper that you don't mind getting messed up because you're going to slop a little bit of glue on this. All right. So I just got an old piece of newspaper that I'm using as a backing. Let's try to get some on the stems and the petioles. Okay, that doesn't look too bad right there. Now, 
try to orient the plant kind of like you had it when you did a dry run there and place it on the sheet remember always leaving room down here in the lower right hand corner for the label okay that looks like that right okay if you do get a little bit of glue on the outside take a piece of your your absorbent uh, blotter paper here and just blot the glue up a little bit so that it comes off the leaf okay now the uh, you might take a little bit of tape not a, an excessive amount but just a little bit of, of scotch tape and tape down the stems to give it a little bit more support just little pieces here again there is there are specialized tapes that you can use and so forth but um, it's really not necessary scotch tape will do very well into the under these situations here okay you might want to just maybe not on all of them but tape a little bit out here on the outside edge of the leaves this is going to help stick or adhere the leaves to the paper along with the glue about one more should do it okay uh, we have the plant on the paper you can look at the characteristics that we talked about before but I'll go over them again a red oak which this is Quercus rubra has um, pointed lobes on it these lobes are pointed at the end of each little lobe there's a little small hair structure at the end of the lobes which is characteristic of the red oak but if you look on the underside of the leaves which we've got presented here in the axles of the veins there's some little small fuzzy hairs that's representative of a red oak so that's why we want the leaf turned over so that we're looking at the bottom side of it okay now the label um, you can type this up on the computer you can use three by five cards probably nothing bigger than a three by five card and turn it over and just put a little bit of glue you can use double-sided tape you can use a lot of different things to adhere the label to the herbarium sheet you don't have to put it in the lower right hand corner you can put it anywhere but in this situation we like to have them in the lower right hand corner because if you're looking at a stack of herbarium species samples and you want to look at you can kind of thumb through them in the lower right hand corner rather than taking them all out and searching for it they'll all be in the same place on this okay so now we've got a red oak specimen mounted we've got a label on it giving the common name the genus and species the common name is red oak the genus and species is Quercus rubra and the family which is the Fagaceae family or the beach family where it was collected it was the College of Southern Maryland La Plata campus on August 26 2009 and myself Lee Vines collected the specimen so those that's the information that you need on the labels for the plants now we're going to let this dry from anywhere from 24 to 48 hours what you do with this is you get a some old-fashioned wax paper not saran wrap or anything like that but wax paper place over the specimen like so now if you were going to do several stacks of, or several specimens in a stack you would just leaf them together just like we did with the plant press okay now once we get the wax paper on we place another piece of cardboard on this we've got cardboard on either side remember the cardboard is to do nothing more than distribute the pressure and the weight evenly across the specimen itself and then we've come up with another wonderful use 
for these very large expensive biology books that you purchase to take biology courses. You need a weight on this and you take a biology book, place it here, if you hear again, if you've got several plants on here, you put the book right on top. Now leave this for about 24 to 48 hours and you should come up with an herbaria mount looking like this. Obviously a different species, but this was collected by a student in the last um, one or two semesters ago. Okay, that's it.